I remember this very, very well, that, so, we had been first exposed, you know, I, I think, played violin when I was very young, you know, that didn't take. And then we were in, into rock stuff, and we were totally into it, like, like kids are, you know, just all day, all night, you know, totally obsessed. But then there were all these records in my parents' house, and, um, of classical stuff, and, you know, both, um, contemporary stuff, but, you know, Beethoven, Brahms, whatever, whole, whole bevy of stuff. And I remember us starting to listen as my brother and I sort of happened at the same time, listening to this stuff. And as much as I love this rock music, I felt this other, this other thing I was listening to, it had this like breadth where you could go anywhere. It seemed to be so rich in terms of, I mean, emotion is not motion, character, whatever, whatever word you want to say. And it was also that it was about that sort of travel, like, you know, a, a pop song sets up a parameter and it sort of is what it is and it sustains that and there's the minor articulations but with a piece of like a piece of orchestra music of you know if you're talking about Mahler or something like that it's about you know you 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 get on here and you get left off over there or, and taken all around in between so I was very taken to that and I think that's again when you talk about detail in my music I mean those were the things I think were very formative for me that that feeling of, of what this music, whatever we want to call it, does. Quartet set as in a part of a group of pieces that sometimes I would talk about music in the third person, which is vocalissimus and entanglement in Theo's sketchbook, that steps back and has this idea that, like, okay, when you read a novelist, a novel, you don't assume, even if there's a first person narrative, you don't assume it's that person. It's somehow distanced. And, and obviously, there'd be other novels that would have many, either both characters that have different point of views, but even maybe characters that serve as narrators, and that music, however, there's sort of the presumption, I think, that it's sort of a first-person thing. It's like memoir all the time. Um, and I wondered if that needed to be true, or if you could, there'd be advantage from stepping back from that a little bit. Um, and so, that's very clear in something like Vocalissimus, where it's, um, 18 settings of the same Wallace Stevens poem. It becomes very much about that. Um, and it was something like Entanglement, where it's sort of a basic concept for a, a piece that two composers have, but they're very different, so it, it's borne out in different ways. Um, Theo's sketchbook is like a compilation of through the lifetime of a composer, so it gives a sense of a narrative arc of a lifetime of a composer's music. Um, but quartet set, so it's the more abstract of those, but I suppose follows in that in some way, in that I thought of it as, um, and I don't think I executed it that well, but as somehow the past and the present as being the two voices. And if you notice when the piece begins even, um, it has this sort of almost Viennese little, little thing that it begins with. And the violin comes in on this one note and it crescendos to this note. And when it gets to the top of the note, uh, this sort of, it moves to the next note and a, a chord comes in, you really feel like sort of right before you it's sort of morphed between two worlds. And I want to, I, I don't think I fully, I don't think I did it extremely enough or, or consistently enough through the piece, but that was my idea. I have no nostalgia. I mean, I, I mean, I post computers. I write differently. Um, it allows you to write, but it doesn't deal with that much. I don't usually. I don't copy a piece until like very end. That's the last stage. That's like that's like draft seven, let's say, or something like that. Um, and that idea of not having to deal with musical notation that much until that point, I find very liberating. Um, and I, I I feel one thing that's helped me over time is I've learned to sketch. And I think. 
I think this is something, and maybe it takes time, because you need to know what you do to sketch. It's always that sort of chicken and egg thing, right? But I think there's something very difficult about, about um, and I think I used to do this, and I think music, having to notate stuff forces you this, where you end up working very hard and having to make local decisions of details early on, and you've, you've spent a week on this thing, and then it's like that horrible moment where you suddenly said, wait a second, that doesn't work with what became, you know what I mean? And yet you spent all this time. And so I, I try as much as possible not to like work from the whole and work in because you know so you make so much better decisions about local things when you know how it fits in the whole and to have to make something lo a local decision early on is hard um, and I was always impressed with uh, there was a show of um, Geary at the Guggenheim a while ago and they, they show all his models have you ever seen a Geary model when he starts like um, it's the most horrible looking thing. It's like a scrunch piece of paper, and there's a piece of balsa wood that's been sort of cracked in half. And you look at it, and you think, "What's that disgusting thing?" And you look and say, "That's Bilbao." You know, it's like no, you know, because he he would start with like very, you know, because because of course the idea is he just needed to get the form. He knew he'd figure out the beauty of the particular curve later, but sort of we're going to get sort of what the basic layout is, and once you get that, then you model it with a little more detail. Um, so that's sort of how I, I work now, and I think computers help me to do that to sort of work broadly and then to zero in and then the, the end, all the end decisions are when I copy it into the um, finale at the end. You know. somebody um, you don't know and they ask you what you do and like oh what type of music do you write and it's like it's funny thing here I am you know in my 50s and I still don't know how to you know, deal, deal with that question um, so I think I think the answer is um, yes I feel connected to that but I think there's also when you say that there's some associations that maybe can give the incorrect feeling too because it's all about doing something new but relating to something from the past also. Um, and so when you just say classical music, it tends to sound like a throwback and, um, and it doesn't point to, oh, um, as I've done in the last eight years or so on, different new media stuff, so on and so forth, that would seem to not be included in that sort of description. So I, um, I, I guess I'd say I um, reluctantly accept it, but it doesn't seem like a really the perfect um, nomenclature, really. <laughs> <laughs>